Why well, all eyes are on autism this month, but what do we know about the disorder now that we didn't know about before? Here's the story. In 2001, Nicholas was born, and for that first year of life, he was meeting all his developmental milestones. But six months later, Genevieve Kumaple says her son lost eye contact and would not respond to his name. Really, we felt disconnected from him, and he felt disconnected from the world around him. The family learned he had autism. I shut the door and pulled the covers over my head and just didn't want to just die, basically. And it, I was in denial for almost a year. Kuma Play is a pharmacist at St. Peter's University Hospital in New Brunswick. She provides medicine for people with cancer, but that didn't make her immune to handling the news that her second born had autism. One of the things that I had, you know, challenges with was the fact that here it is, I'm a pharmacist, and yet I knew nothing about autism. Dr. Barbie Zimmerman Beer had a similar epiphany. When her firstborn Sam was diagnosed, she switched from general pediatrics to developmental pediatrics, today serving as the chief for the department at St. Peter's. Actually, connecting with the families is somewhat therapeutic for me as well because I feel like, um, you know, I see kids that are very similar to Sam and I see them doing a better job and I feel like I've made a difference. One in 88 children have autism, and the rates are twice as high in New Jersey. Experts say part of it is more diagnoses, and another part could be genetics. The average age for diagnosis is four, but Zimmerman says most cases can be confirmed by age two. Right now they've looked at things like response to name and eye contact. We would love to look at kids from birth. Uh, looking at uh, certain inflammatory markers, looking at placental changes, looking at um, uh, eye gaze. Now recently there have been several studies released that show that pregnant women that are obese or older fathers can contribute to a child having autism. But whether these studies will be effective remains to be seen. You know it's very complicated, it's not just one gene and it's probably a combination of factors. So what we're looking at is really not related to when the changes occurred. And most recent findings show like the changes in brain through MRI studies uh, of kids with autism prospectively. Experts say early diagnosis and intervention are key. Occupational, behavioral and speech therapies have helped Sam, who is now 22 years old, skis, drives and works at a local supermarket. And for Nicholas, he communicates, but he is still nonverbal. Our vision and hope is that, yeah, he'll be able to function in society. And, you know, but we realize that every child is different. So as a parent, we never, ever lose hope. Kuma Play and her husband started a nonprofit called My Goal Autism, which helps support the family as a whole. Given that a child with autism can cost a family $60,000 a year, the organization also provides grants to help those struggling financially get the needed treatment for their child. Reporting in New Brunswick, I'm Lisa Wojtyki for WNBC News. Now this Sunday, My Goal is holding a fundraiser at Stelton Lanes in Piscataway. To attend or donate, you can go to their website and check it out. Also, next year, new guidelines will change the definition of autism, a shift that could increase the number of children diagnosed.